Hello, everyone, and welcome. Ooh, what's this? Yes, look, we have closed captions now from the wonderful uh, website that we've tapped into. Isn't that handy for our video feed, uploading to YouTube, and now you can see what we say. But for the podcasting expect of our show, welcome to We Shot First on the very precipice of book three because you know what i have not run the dawn of defiance episode three queen of air and darkness credits because technically every party deserves a little down to pine and when we when we left our party we had left them in hyperspace we had poser sham played by adam aiden willems drinking in the Aft, I think it's um, hmm, number 20. He's drinking away in the escape shuttle. Ains in the house tonight. Hello. We have frantically plugging and unplugging the monolith box and Xbox and whatever box he has hands on, invading the bridge private space. You hardly see Dr. Leth up there. Jay Tamlin's in the house tonight. Uh, I don't particularly like it up here. It's quite stuffy. Let's get back to the lab. Behind the wheel, Haas, the cyborg, who just was a guy waiting around, you know, for someone to tell him which way to drive. And now he has a chance to show off his piloting skills. Well, hyperspace is kind of an autopilot. Joe Gibson's in the house tonight. Hello, hello. At his side ranging as co-pilot and flicking some switches i'll be handling old man zinn usually played by frank hamilton who is absent this evening and we have merrick the mercenary double checking and rechecking the switches down at the engines played by ryan messina tonight or not dramatic pause i, I don't think he's come back from break yet oh well that's fine He's just down knee deep in the engine room. And last but not least, Mr. Matt Witt, who left an aging, just recently come out of a coma, but a fine woman is a fine woman in his quarters, went to the refresher, as in the bathroom on a ship in Star Wars lingo, and had the most terrible feeling about sensing someone that he knows on that giant star destroyer its signature wedge shape jutting into high orbit around the planet before they ran away mr matt witt is in the bathroom but he's also in the house man a multi multi uh tasking purposes multiplayer tasking <laughs> yep <laughs> Get, guess what? This is speech to text, <laughs> and it's a bit garbled. Now, quick, quick fun fact. Okay, through the week, a lot of podcasting casts, you know, don't have direct contact, and during these times, social distancing is a thing, and we email each other. Uh, no, we have cell phones. We text each other. Sure. But if you're in a busy job like some of us and you suddenly need to tell this guy something or ask that player something, you know, whipping out the phone when no one's looking, when you're still supposed to be working or on a quick break and hitting the old, you know, message Aiden, message Ryan, message somebody and hitting that little microphone symbol, speech to text. That's my go-to. They hate it. <laughs> it's because it's a totally different language, man. <laughs> like it really is a, a legit, totally different language. <laughs> Uh, but it doesn't help it doesn't help that a lot of the terms that we use uh are not common linguistical terms like uh millennium falcon doesn't come out as millennium falcon um uh, hyperspace doesn't even come out as hyperspace like you got like <laughs> you so got like pfeiffer's pfeiffer's face so like right before you guys jump into Pfeiffer's face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. My my favorite was um when you guys I I text speech to text like a paragraph, send it, don't check it, run off back to work, and then I get a question from someone like Joe Gibson, fat footed? You know, take a five foot steep? What? You know, like this kind of thing. Or or Rob Hammond shoot up. Anyway. But we have um legitimately 
are trying to improve our video quality as well as our audio quality, but obviously not really improving our personal lives um, behind the mic or behind the phone. Mm, yours truly is responsible. So apologies to my cast and crew who continue to find the time to get behind random times now. It's not necessarily even Friday night we're recording this. It's Monday night. It's three, three in the morning. It's this, it's that. Try to get these guys together so that we can record a video, pull the audio, make a vodcast, make a podcast, and get it up on the net. Not live as a Friday night live stream. We apologize. But right now, we are definitely trying to get as much material any day we can up there in time once a week for you to absorb. So, when last we left our heroes... Hyperspace, coordinates punched in. Haas, you are headed for deep space. Left space, just right of the Felucian space. A random nowhere off a hyperlane where your captain has assured you. Matt. Yes. That there's a ship out there? Yep. Yeah, 100% sure this is the rendezvous coordinates for the resurgence. And it's what they left us. If, if they're not there, we're going to have to track them from that point. But I uh, can't see any reason for them taking off. And in your own words, you know, for those that are just joining us and are contemplating going back several seasons, because we're just beginning season three of We Shot First and almost hitting book three. What is the resurgence? What's going on? Who are you people? Where are you going? What? What's go? What? 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 Well, we've been sent on a mission by Bill Organa himself. To rid the galaxy of scum and villainy. All up in your uh, head. Wait, no, that's yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Dude no, asked um, you to do some off the books wet work, some black ops far, far before the rebellion was ever formed. This is like three months after Order 66, and the Senate is still kind of standing. Right. Uh, I believe we were looking for information having to do with Project Sarlacc. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, and we had, uh, I, I, I think completed is a, not the proper term, but we had uh, gotten finished with our forte on Cato Nemoidia. And now we are headed back to the resurgence to figure out what the hell's going on with our ship and uh, find out where Darga has headed to continue our investigation into Project Zarlac. I think that covers it. Yeah. Don't forget the rescue of Admiral Gildervarth from the Felucian uh, outpost yes, yes. garrison. Not to forget the recovery of Bail Organa's personal security agent who offered credits and fell into a coma. Uh, we have recently found our second coma patient. Well, you guys are just racking up the coma points. Some frequent between you and Leth and you're the nurse and he's the doctor. Uh, a second patient, a old lady for some reason that Darga the Hut had kept on ice and has sort of cozied up to Poser Sham for reasons unknown. But... Well, right, right now she's cozied up in my personal quarters. That's right. <laughs> but the doctor knows. The doctor saw them together holding the freaking freight bay door together with their minds! Or they just stuck a toe in that corner so it couldn't, you know... You know, when a salesman tries to, like, get into your doorway and they jam their boot in the door and so you still talk to them. One or the other, I'm sure. So, guys, let's fast forward from this point in time, several hours in hyperspace. But something did happen we have to address. You guys hit fifth level. Magically, some, somehow. So, starting with the captain, what levels do you have of what classes and what did you take? And then what talent trees are exploring? And what is with this gut feeling that I keep dishing out to you? Is it really, really palatable at this level? Or, or no, oh, my gut feeling hasn't really manifested as of yet, but it will very soon. Oh, all right. very soon. So, however, I, uh, I, I, uh, I took another level of noble. So, how many you got on your belt right now? Staying true to the course. So, I am four levels of noble, one level of soldier. Okay. And this level I gained a noble feat, so I took predictive defense, furthering my uh, AC bonus by now I can either use my dexterity or my intelligence as my uh, reflex defense modifier. 
Oh, that's pretty cool. Yes. So now my reflex is naturally so flat footed 16, which is very good. Or uh, with my armor on until I hit level seven, uh, 20. Hmm. So that was my big, I'm even tougher now. <laughs> no, that's, that's very cool. So um, we are playing the Dawn of Defiance campaign, which has some set rules. Some we've broken, but we are trying to stay true to the core rule set to see how broken it may have rumored to be. But the actual campaign has a couple set rules, including static hit points. So nobles roll a d6. They're going to give you four every time you level. Uh, if you're like a Jedi or a soldier, instead of like of a D10, you get like seven. You pretty much get your 65, 70%, you know, try and keep you alive. There's destiny points because the player picks a destiny. But in this campaign, there are only three destinies available. Third season, I thought I'd reveal this. And the players asked me to choose them and track any residual points and bonuses they may get when they do something heroic to move them towards their destiny because it's their destiny. And I have, but from the audience points of view, you guys are still guessing and there's no way you can sort of publicly go, Oh, they have this destiny. They have that destiny. But I will tell you this. I'll tell you what the three destinies are. They are discovery, destruction, and rescue. And these themes repeat themselves throughout all 10 of these mini modules. Now, these adventures I find are a little shorter, even though it's taking us forever to get through them. They are written pretty compactly, um, and it shouldn't take us like the next 10 years to get through them. We will get through them much quicker now that we've got our 90 minute show going as opposed to like a 45 minute show going hopefully get, you know get more contact per episode so even if we only release star wars bi-weekly uh we're making the episodes longer so that more adventure gets played discovery destruction rescue well any dm would go oh well this guy blows stuff up this guy is nosy this guy saves people no no no, no. just because a player acts a certain way or leans towards, you know, a certain destiny doesn't mean that is the path destiny has chosen for them. And I will keep my own counsel on who has what destiny, gentlemen. Moving on to the doctor, Dr. Leth, our next sort of notable noble, because I believe the noble class is the one that gives you lots of skills and you are a very highly skilled individual, sir. But there's more than just noble on your belt these days, isn't there, Jay? Uh, there most certainly is. I have been... Unfortunately, not been able to particularly practice more... Uh, do con Conduct as much of my research as I would like. And as such, my techniques and skills have been kind of directed elsewhere. Go on. And... Well, at the moment, that uh, at level five, I am two levels of noble, a level of soldier. Uh, and then that is what I differentiate from from Rahul in that I also have two levels of scoundrel. Go on. So? Well, the next level that I took that for level five, I took a level of scoundrel as well, which gave me a feat off of their list. Um. It's been seen in the past that apparently Dr. Leth is rather efficient with a pistol directly in someone else's face, as far as combat is concerned. So I took a feat called Zero Range Shot, which basically, if I shoot you in the face from directly in front of you, it hurts a lot more. I'm sorry, did you say Zero Ranged Shot? Zero Range Shot. Okay. It stacks with point blank. All sorts of fun things. I'm sorry, I'm just laughing. Like, we are enunciating. It's like, ranged orange shot is coming up on... <laughs> I like my orange shot. <laughs> Take the orange shot. I was like, I am not going to hear the end of this soon from a fan. I just know it. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yep. Sorry, Jay. Please keep going. 
Uh, and as beyond that, it's a simple matter of increasing. Uh, yeah, so in the past little while, Leth has been quite the quite combat directed, and as such, I felt that it was more necessary to increase those abilities going forward. Uh, but now that we have some downtime, I can finally start making use of one of the abilities I picked up around third, which should be fun. Which is what? Oh, that was tech specialist. The tr the talent tree or the actual class that's like the appended, sort of the bonus class? Uh, it's not a talent, it's a feat. Oh, okay. So like I, I was saying, at about third, I ended up picking that up, but I haven't had the downtime necessary to really make use of it. Okay. Aside from my own equipment. And as nobility, you pretty much get your four hit point to go. Um, how's the base attack shaping up for uh, you and Matt there, boys? You guys you hit like I'm a... up to three. Well, uh, I am up to base attack bonus of four now. Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, flip, uh, flipping between Noble and Scoundrel are two different classes that also start with zero BAB, so I'm slightly behind. But skilled. Incredibly skilled. Indeed. Cool. Anything else for Dr. Leth? At face shooting. Uh, oh, well, I suppose... <laughs> indeed. I suppose the only other thing of note is that I received another research grant. Oh, Oh, right, because you guys have the, um, <clears throat> took the talent tree where you guys get a certain stipend. And for role-playing sense, you said your yours is a government grant. And now with all those ex-wives charging Matt money, how do you make money, Matt? Oh, no, they don't charge money. They just take half of my holdings and then manage my half on whatever world I left them on. Oh, this uh, is like, it's, it's all part of my most brilliant pyramid scheme ever. <laughs> oh, okay. He's actually spectacularly rich if he didn't have 10 ex-wives and the, like whatever he, whatever's left over is those few thousand credits that he gets I'm, every I'm just terrible with money. So whenever I'm actually in charge of a business, it usually goes under in very short order. But I... As I'm great at like getting a, you know, like I, I'm the startup guy. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> like, well, I get things, I can get the ball rolling, but if I actually have to run the business, it'll fail. No, so, I, I really like how you guys are playing similar classes, but with talent trees and even picking the same talent, you guys have gone a very different direction of explaining how the money comes in. So before I ask Dr. Leth again, since she were the first one we talked to, um, Rahal, what about money going out? Because off the mic, we were talking about you paying Merrick, Matt, uh, Ryan's character. Yes. So um, he gets a salary every level. I give him an additional, here's your, here's your lump sum for letting me hide behind you when people are shooting at us. He is very good shooter. <laughs> he is very good tipper. Um, so, yeah. so I gave him a cool 5G. Here you go, my friend. Uh, and that left me with... Uh, uh, 41,775 credits, which I'm probably going to need a bunch of because there's going to be bribing and fun stuff like that. But I, that also should give me some, you know, toys to play with. Hopefully. Hopefully. Well, at least Merrick can afford a few of those um, uh, grenades. But that's only if, uh, you know, they have them. Because there's one thing is um, <clears throat> the low level characters are not supposed to have military grade weapons and such. But I think, I, I think Merrick's. To the point nope. now where as long as we can provide him with the raw materials he could probably make his own ammunition oh that's right i have a generator okay so before we switch off to merrick and talk about what's new about him dr leth with the money oh well as my money is a research grant it is being put to proper use um my money is being spent on ensuring that the equipment and materials that we use daily on the ship are up to uh, up to snuff and up to quality. Uh, basically, my my research is, as we know, uh, interspecies relationships. So, if I don't keep said interspecies of test subjects alive, then it's quite problematic for myself. You actually have like sentient species on board. Yeah. It's, oh no, it's, it's called the, the, the rest of the party. Yes, <laughs> the, the rest of the people that are living on the ship are my research subjects. Oh, okay. 
So, and all, and so uh, how are you finding the relationships uh, of reproduction between five males and one little old lady? At, uh... yeah, surely <laughs> a few papers so have been specifying written. specifically uh, reproduction. Oh, sorry. But just sexual relations. Or is this just, romance? Uh, no, not even sexual. Just inter, uh, just inter, uh, interspecies No, the relations. successful adventures. Okay. Oh, oh, so we all just have had a really dirty mind this whole time. Well, no. He's just like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you guys remember episode one where he like, got stopped at the loading bay? I think he was just trying to make the guard like uncomfortable so they wouldn't go through his stuff, and we just ran with it because Jay's never said beyond that. You know what I mean? Well, cool. to be to be fair, we haven't asked. That's true. <laughs> fair enough. That that's true. I think. What are you a doctor of? <laughs> so now I yes. believe it's Scientology. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, definitely not Scientology. A better question for me would be, what am I not? What am I not a doctor of? And the answer would be, uh, would be at the moment, a psychology degree. Okay. Which is what I'm working on. Ah, so you, you literally is he is studying people. It's like a, a Zeno, Zeno, Xenobiology kind of thing, but it's not the biology. It's like Zeno mentality. Zeno sociology. Zeno psychology. Yeah. Yeah. Zeno, Zeno, Zeno something. Space people. He says just the people in the space, and you're here in his space, and he studies you. Okay, that's cool. So. Uh, anything else you want to add, Dr. Leth, before we move to the next schmo? About your guy? About leveling no. up? No? Uh, the rest are secret. No, I think that's about <laughs> it for now. Okay. So, Merrick, you're getting paid five grand. And I know a couple levels ago, you're, you've you got some soldier, you got some scoundrel, you got into some saboteur kind of stuff. You can make your own explosives. What's going on with you these days? I could always make explosives since olden days. You know droids around ship? I could make five bombs from them. Okay. Just remember that. One droid, five bombs. Could be a number in future. Who knows? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but as for things that are new, no, Maddox is Maddox. Sasha, Sasha, she has a cousin now. She has a cousin? She has a cousin. Since Planet with Mushrooms. You know, Toad Souls, the uh, Imperium Cantonment. We took it out. We happened to capture a few objects of interest. A generator. Oh, yeah, right. It, was, it came with the E Web rifle. Yeah, I remember. Yes, but it is, it's a very big weapon. And to be honest, it, just, it cannot do the things that Sasha does. So you don't think you're going to make uh, your gun jealous by um, patchworking together a new girlfriend? I have inspiration, but I have other idea for Sasha, and I have other idea for um, the Souser. Oh, yeah? You're, you're, sport are you, you're looking ill there on the video. You're looking a little green there, uh, Merrick, <laughs> in the background. Get the wrong guy up. <laughs> oh. um, <laughs> it happens sometimes, you know. I've shared my alcohol with someone else, so I haven't had a drink of mother's milk in the past 20 minutes. Perhaps I should check on our uh, young one. Well, while you're switching the character in the green screen behind you, big reveal, um, your attack bonuses go up. Uh, you know, what did you take a new level in specifically? Anything new and exciting in there? New talents, new feats? I am a better soldier today than I was yesterday. Could you be more specific? <laughs> I feel like I'm as being as specific as I can be. You do not take any feats? <laughs> I, I really appreciate the, in, the, the in character, but you know, like, take a page from Jay where he stayed in character and yet sort of talked around the feat as opposed to like, yes, I'm more better. <laughs> Could you... I, I did not get the option of gaining a feat. Ah, okay. No bonus feat for the soldier at first. I no? dabbled outside of being a soldier once. Oh, and I now it's met that right. Yeah, okay. But I have stayed the course since. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Anything else you want to tell us about or add, Mr. Merrick, before we move on? 
To be honest, I would have expected Porter to bring back the flask I gave him earlier. I did not expect him to keep it for such an amount of time. <laughs> okay. I am slightly concerned for this one. <laughs> okay. So, um, switching up into the bridge, where, you know, I mean, we're kind of, you're kind of on autopilot. You, you do have to monitor hyperspace, but, uh, you know, you're up there, you're behind the wheel, Haas. Now, Haas is uh, technically a PC NPC, someone that, like, we've added for our own story purposes as well as somebody that might enhance something we've found in the adventure so um joe made haas back in the day when we used to play d20 star wars under doug warren and i asked him to play this character because i love this character um and then we talked about how he would be discovered and you know the cybernetics and yada yada, yada. um but you you're you joined the party late, so like Zinn, you're kind of like a level behind or whatever. So what do you got going in your, you know, maybe it's time to pop the cow and learn a little bit more about Haas, Joe. Uh, four levels of soldier. Jeez, you're worse than Ryan. And could you elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> As I'm pulling up my character sheet so I can read it. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> this whole time I stand here going, no, makes sense. Yeah. Stay course. Go. Good choices, Joe. Yes. But uh, gun heavy pilot if you will like my it's okay so focusing on the pilot um the talent tree there can you talk a little bit about that there is no talent tree there it is just the pilot skill <laughs> oh okay so like well there's did, the did you skill did you skill focus it oh there's the i guess it's a prestige class later ace pilot and stuff then there's like the jedi ace pilot and blah 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 yeah, and the force pilot and all that stuff yeah yeah so it's up and coming so right now he's just putting the numbers where they should be maxing the pilot and okay yep. good good to know good to know anything you wish to add mr haas oh, that that isn't a trade secret you know the fans get to know okay yep um excuse me um now again zinn is hovering around fourth and i think he was third fourth like he was frank was at the point where he just hasn't leveled or is about to you know he's kind of in limbo as a scout um and he's got his sniper rifle that's the special flatchet rifle that does the um you know the ex-wife that does a crap ton um and last and of course you know saving the jedi for for last let's talk about a Young Padawan who's uh, into his cups right now. <laughs> I may have uh, drank a little too much. This is wild. <laughs> I need to get my hands on more of this stuff. L little surreal there. Um, I need you to focus, Padawan. Um, your exposure to these mercenaries and Oops. and only Oops. being able to pick up some force training on the distant primitive world of Felosia, Felusia, uh, under this strange Goku-style master who punished you with his powers to force the lessons into you. And now you meet this Jedi master who's a little bit more civilized from the core worlds, though she still thinks the war is going on and is suffering from sort of like a, a lapse in time plus from a coma. So she's obviously not herself. She's not up to speed. Um, sporting the Jersey Force accent and being from probably the planet where Rahal actually spent so much time and picked up their accent. You approached her immediately and said, stand down, don't let these guys know what you are. You know, swap the clothes. And she's kept things on the down low. And now you guys may have exposed yourselves just to save the ship and after and that ourselves. And, and yourselves she's exhausted and has you know collapsed and Rahal has taken her away from the med bay to rest in his quarters and you found your way into a bottle well before we talk about that because that sounds like an in game kind of thing let's talk about what Aiden's done with his character you know, who has the most secrets? Well, this guy, several levels of what? Nothing. Nothing? And I've taken another level in nothing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. So, um, this, um, mystical, uh, 
power granting, um, combative. I mean, you get base attack bonus like the soldier. You get hit points like the soldier. You know, this, this is a powerful class. Might I be do there. lose out on weapon proficiencies of the soldier, which has been biting me in the butt since day one. Yes, because the weapon you've been trained in, you've lost. Um, though we've hinted at possible ways of you, you know, getting your hands on one. Um, yeah. Master Dina's is probably like long gone, sold off in the hands of Darga. She didn't seem to have one on her. It's like, oh, you know, I must get to this chest in a corner and get out my glow stick. Yeah, no. Um, no. But um, I know it's kind of common practice for you to like reveal your powers as you need them. So, right. but I got to say, like, in our Discord server, the Star Wars fans that we have the chat and everyone is like, they want to know your build. They want to know your power. They, so you got to give us something. You don't have to reveal, you know, I won't make you reveal like each well, power, but, you know, where, where so are we leaning here? Continue. Well, okay. So at fifth level, I don't get any new feats. The only thing I get is a talent. Okay. Now, I was going along the lines you know first off with my talents of you know talking to people you know trying to you know calm people down get people on my side you know um yeah the nego- that negotiate. hasn't really been working oh okay but, so and due to the fact of how reliant i've been on my force powers as of late you know we can see multiple instances of it you know taking on the gamorians um, you know, taking on the final big bad of the last book, you know, trying to raise the cargo lift. I've been very focused on, you know, telekinetic force powers. And so I've taken the talent to help me with that. Oh, cool. What's that? So, uh, telekinetic savant. Um, so you're, so you're once per encounter. You're, sorry. So now you're natural, you know, you didn't know, you didn't realize yeah. Really leaning into the big head thing. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> uh, For those who don't know, he's playing a Syrian and has a cone shaped head. Uh, but no, so once per encounter is a swift action, I can return one force power with the telekinetic descriptor to my suite without spending a force point. So normally you can dump a force point to get a power back, but with this talent, as long as it's a telekinetic power, how often can you do this? once per encounter so so like what's a an example of uh telekinetic force power move object force grip oh. uh, let's see i think i have one more i do not have one more those are the only two that i have right now that he's Still. revealed <laughs> well I, you- I believe the goku ball force blast is also telekinetic so if i picked that up i could bring that back as well but Bo- book one halfway through a force user that's a master that could train you and you had five minutes with him and then his village is burned and the empire showed up the very end of book two and you're on the run with this woman trying to get her back to resurgence you know another slim chance to get some training in um yeah but but i lost my bikes (laughs) <laughs> oh, is that why you're drinking? That, <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm drinking. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. He goes from having none to having all of them. Then to none. No, I had none, then one, then all of them, and now none again. So the scene descends. I believe Merrick mm, wanted to oh, get, get his bottle back. Jim. <laughs> yes, sir. I did... I must let you know, when you say, have I learned anything new? And I say, no, Merrick is Merrick. I'm sorry, Merrick, you had your chance. We need to start playing now. So moving on. Uh, (laughs) No, go ahead. (laughs) No, Uh, it was a simple thing. It will be quick. Yep. I can shoot things. But I can shoot one thing a lot. And miss everything else. I really should have. It's simple. St- I really should have stood with just cutting you off and moving. <laughs> yes. I told you, simple thing. I can burst upon one target, all of my fury, in one shot, and be done with it. Ah, oh, okay. 
The, but no, sorry. I, the, the prey and spray. It is shooting. It is simple thing that Merrick does since day one. Okay. I shoot. You, st- you shoot straight. Okay. Sometimes. Sometimes. All right. So, Merrick, you mentioned um, you were working on the engine. I was maintaining after fixing all the panels. Everything was in chaos. We are running and there is no smoke coming out. Right. Uh, the reactor is pulsating and f- uh, processing, you know, its fuel. Safely. At, 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 yeah, at a normal rate. Um, you mentioned possibly hunting down your bottle. It's. I have had it. It was heirloom. Okay. I have to put feel it again. And well, from where I, you're standing, you can actually look over your left shoulder and see the escape pod that Poser has locked himself in with the door closed. Well, the intention was not for him to take it and then leave and go away. The intention was to take it, have seep. One does not have more than seep from the bottle. But he left with my bottle. Mm. So what do you want to do now? I want to get my bottle back. Ship is not burning and on fire. And no one is yelling at Merrick. I am going to get my barrel bottle back. Okay. So head on over to Escape Pod 20. And you find yourself faced with a closed door. Little tiny window. So you can see the... Knock, 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 knock. <laughs> Poser? Are you coherent? Pose, poser's barely coherent. Okay. So you peek through the window and you see him kind of like, you know those um, bus seats or skate pods in the movies where the seat is actually, the back of the seat is set at like almost a 45 degree angle and they're set really low. So your knees come up and you're actually like sitting, your butt, your hips are like really low to the floor and then it, the seat juts up to kind of like give you leg room. And you're sitting down, low, and back. This is how these seats are designed to accommodate a bunch of people in a small space. And Poser's kind of rocking back and forth, trying to escape these seats and not having a very good time of it. (laughs) What do you want to do? I sit beside them. Okay. Pop the door open. Head on in. (laughs) Merrick! Bozer. How are you doing, buddy? It's good to see you. Oh. Wait. I'm going fine. It was, it was you who gave me this. Thank My you, bottle. buddy. And I just hug him. I just hug him. <clears throat> hugging. We are doing hugging. Okay, we're hugging. Um. And just like one hand, it's awkward. I reach over and I give him like the kind of there, there, but it's a big meaty Merrick hand on the back. There, there. Oh, yeah. No, I, I'm zooming in on the map. We are sustaining this hug for as long as possible. There you go. What? <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> um, you okay. We have hugged. Yes, we have hugged. That was yes. wonderful. You are warm. I, um, I am big. Quite. Can I you are bottle? so big. I like, am big. You are big, big. Like, I wait wow. a minute. Are you judging me? No, 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 I, no, 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 no. I mean, just like the size of your forearms, the circumference is the same as my head. That's just wild. We it's are, like mind blowing wild. Yes, we are different. It is amazing. Your head is the size of Sasha. Exactly. See, yes. you get it. You get it. Of course. Yes, of course. I checked the bottle. I, I go to take a drink because I'm like, I got deal with Poser. He's- <laughs> bottle is empty. <laughs> Do you, Poser, you drank all of the bottle? I did. It was delicious. You all tasted the bottle. Better. I had just filled this back up. Um, <laughs> like yourself, that, like <laughs> with <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, no, it's okay. Uh, you you needed it, Bowser. It's fine. Wait, why? I filled it up again. Why did I need it again? 
I it, it is it's a tradition from where I come from. If you seem like you had suffered loss and an instinct when one of uh, someone from my country has a loss, we have a drink, we toast to what is lost and cannot be brought back. Wait. So I thought you needed toast because you look like you had lost. What did I lose? I don't know. What did you lose? I don't know. What did I lose? You took, you must have lost something big. Wait, where's, where's my, wait, wait, where's Rahal? Oh God, did we lose Rahal? No, and that we definitely require a big drink. But no, we have not lost Rahal. Oh, oh. Um, Thanks. okay, you're in escape pod. It's they okay. love it's... me. They really love me. <laughs> it's like sneezing in the other room. They're talking about him. Yeah. <laughs> He's just tapping in the intercoms. Uh, Merrick, you did see him freak out at the door in the cargo bay. Something happened in the adjacent bay that we never went into, and he was freaking out at it. He was very yes. upset. You don't know what happened, but you saw he was very upset at that door because it's right near the engine room station. Hey. There was problems with the electrical at that time. It was hard for me to see what was going on exactly. Mm -hmm. It was the most of the time. Merck is a sensitive individual. So, my friend needs assistance. We toast to your loss. You know uh, what? I... Wait here. If you need. I, oh. we, I have another bottle in Merck's chamber. Come. We'll toast again to your loss. The the camera follows yeah. the camera follows the two of the men out the door and as they stagger their way to uh, Merrick's uh, bedchamber, the scene shifts back to the bridge, where um, Zinn, with a nod, you know, leaves Haas for you know the first watch and retires to his own chamber. Um, Doctor Leth, you have an opportunity alone with Haas, or do you need to get back to your lair? I mean, your lab. Um, I don't believe I have any particular business with Horse, so I take up the black box and ensure that it's disconnected from all ports and mm -hmm. take it with me back to the lab. Sure. And if there is not much else going on, I begin re uh, reassembling Arthur. Okay. He, he, I'm sure he'd be very happy... <laughs> you're doing that I have legs this is great um by this time Rahal I'm sure you've you know left the refresher and what uh let the lady sleep are you wandering the I ship ref I, I refreshed myself I went back to my quarters asked her if she needed anything she's out cold she's you know unconscious and well, I do the whole blanket thing, kiss the okay. forehead, and okay. Now, your own medical training tell you that she's not in duress; she's just exhausted. You know, the, yep. this whole ordeal with Let the ship shaking or whatever happened must have, you know, or or the battle that we you know that she witnessed, and you know, she had that initial "I'm awake," and you guys got her the hell out of there. Might have caught up with her, and now she's just you know spent. So, yep, uh, I'll leave her be and uh, mosey on to probably the bridge and jump on the hollow net spend some of my money okay uh, but some, some of it's uh, I want to I want to buy a uh, security droid for the ship so we've got on board security okay that's 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 the first expense have you have you uh, looked into these droids like the stock models oh yes I have uh, I want I, I, and I don't want just Say so I can get just like a cheapy old battle droid, but I don't trust them. Had a bad experience with the whole separatist movement. So I'm you used to sell real... them. <laughs> well, you need these things inside and out. Yeah. And how That's well did that work them. out for us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you don't want so like one spend... walking around off your shoulder going, Master, why are they all looking at me? Well, you kind of were in the war. You know, okay. I get, yeah. I get it. I get it. No, so, so I'll spend the money and buy an official. It's a 501Z police security droid, specifically... And it's like, oh, got, it's got intelligence, high perception. I, I've got to pull this up. Keep, sorry, keep, go on. I, I just want to, I'm going to see if I can find this. It's a, a 
Uh, 501-Z police security droid. Uh, it is restricted, so I am going to have to make a bureaucracy roll to see if if uh, I can. And okay. I want to order I'll order this puppy and have it ready, you know, before I head out from uh, the resurgence. So it is restricted. Okay. And it is not cheap, but I will try to obtain a legitimate a legitimate license through my business on Bandamir. Well, if it's a police droid, then uh, it's not a police droid; it's a security droid. Yeah. So, but they're often like the Alderanian security police. force may have them. You might be able to. It's still going to cost you the same amount of money, whatever. I'm just saying that you might be able to yeah, get them Well, it's going to be, I, I just have to make the license fee, and I need to figure out what my uh, bureaucracy check requirement is going to be for it. Hmm. Uh, let me see. Ba, 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 ba. Pay the fee. Couple of phone calls. You know. Pay the fee. Make a knowledge bureaucracy against the DC listed in the DC skill column. Where's the DC skill column? Oh, there it is. So I need to make a DC 15 bureaucracy check. So let's do that right now. I've got like a cartoony picture of one. He's got a basic helmeted domed head. And then the eye slot yes, seems 20. to go all the way around the entire face with sort of a, a grilled gas mask metal plate. Totally looks like a Cylon. Yeah, I was going to say. And like a Cylon. big shoulder. and Okay. And I even want it to do the. Okay. <laughs> Because that's just awesome. All right. Um, yeah. So I, I I hit the DC required. Uh, I needed fifteen. I got twenty. And dip, 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 what was the cost? So fourteen thousand plus ten percent is fifteen thousand four hundred credits. That is not cheap, but I can afford it. <laughs> but the question is, did you order Prime? <laughs> well, it'll be it'll be available in two days, okay. According to the chart, so it should, you know, should be good to go before I leave the resurgence, and it should be waiting in Bandamir, which is where I want to go. Okay, is our first destination. now. These police models do they do they speak like they have the the basic um what was it their four oh, yeah, their they're, four. They're, four they're, they get, like there's they're so good they're normally employed as a member of the police force not a droid serving the police force yeah but they're not like protocol droids with the soothing voice they actually have that sort of staticky the like robocop you know, yeah the whole you know the, the the megaphone voice right okay okay no that's cool so that's my first big money purchase yeah so you um you you order him on felucia's on and uh, so as opposed to Amazon, get it? Felucia's on. <laughs> on. I don't know why they got to ship to that planet before they ship to you, but uh. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's all part of my, uh, you know, three or four levels of no direct connection to me. Uh. Okay, that that is the deal. But the whole encounter on uh, Cato Nemoidia taught me you that we need to have permanent, permanent, permanent defense on the ship. Yeah, so we can't have any of that nonsense. Okay, so we're, we're not sneaking in another player. This is another attachment like that butler that I was supposed to voice for you that you keep yeah. forgetting leaving no. everywhere, or Arthur. You, that, you, know. you know when you like, a guy, you know when you park a Lamborghini and the guy walks away and all of you have the whoop whoop? Yeah, exactly. He's the whoop whoop factor. So you, for you our, do the uh, fob and the Cylon goes zzz, zzz. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so he is, he's, his, his, the entire the main purpose for getting him is is skip like security the, so we don't get ambushed the again. One, the one rusted tear because you just keep leaving him alone with the ship. But that being said, anytime we have the need for that extra guns heavy presence, it'll be nice. Okay. So I have a question you know, for you. Have you told Merrick that you're, you know, buying a walking gun machine to possibly Oh, they're gonna be best friends. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know how you buy another cat to keep your other cat happy? Yeah. No, and there's an option. That for, an extra, for, an, for an extra thousand dollars, you can give it the personality. Do you oh, like dude, that is, that is a straight up force point for Matt Witt right there. 
<laughs> that is so good. I, I bought, will take it. <laughs> I bought you a droid bristling with guns because you know. <laughs> after that, no. After the bit, think about it, guys. Like I'm, I'm killing myself laughing because I love the bit with Merrick on the elevator where he got so jealous that you went off on an adventure without him. So now you buy him a cat. You buy him a droid. <laughs> so, no, no, no. You're gonna be. They are legit going to be best friends, though. Yeah, no, 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 honey. There isn't anyone else in my life. I have a toy in case I have needs. You know, I have this thing. Dude, you know, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Got this cat. Right? That's good. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's the first point. Dude, just slap it on there. Oh, thank you. Yep. Oh, jeez. Oh yeah, I guess I have to refresh that with the whole leveling up, don't I? Oh yeah, oh, boys and girls, point. you guys, you all. Oh damn it! <laughs> yeah, I get a destiny and point. So seven, so that that gives me eight force points. Oh yeah. Now don't they? Um, you don't keep accumulating them. You don't. You don't keep accumulating them, but no, you but get you five plus plus half your level, and then you gave me another one. Okay. So you guys would get two for half your level five, seven. You get, okay, so you guys should all have seven force points. He has eight, and you all have yep. one destiny point. Uh, n- maximum of five destiny points. And but right. I think but all of us have points. spent them. So. No, we're just talking about the force points. How they kind of reset to, if you don't I use them, they're gone. All points. Force no. points. Force points. Re up. At that five plus half your character level every time you level, destiny points you gain one per level, and they do accumulate if you don't right. spend them. Yeah, well, so so you guys do get a destiny point. You know, I'm not setting that to zero. It's like, oh yeah, I should get another destiny point. If you guys haven't spent them, then you'll I have mean, more. I was already at zero, so. As, does, is anyone still walking around with like any destiny points? Because I'm pretty sure. I have no. two now. I have one. <laughs> yeah, I have one now. <laughs> Yeah, this, shit of a table. season two was pretty mild for Leth. He really didn't need to throw down guns or hero points or Desi points. So, I, yeah, I know he's still got one. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> um, Haas <laughs> went from third to fourth. So, you get, you have your seven force points, right? Yeah. Destiny points for an NPC. Hmm. I'm going to have to get back to that. No, nope. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You know, uh, you're welcome to board. We'll have to see. Uh, I mean, there was an episode where we we kind of welcomed you on as a full member, you know, of the cast, and a lot of the stuff we're doing with you is just me kind of like surprising. Like Joe isn't. He knows a couple things, but I really am just kind of dulling stuff out to Joe, going, "Okay, this now, okay," you know, that kind of thing, because the cast got a little heavy. Everybody wants to play Star Wars. Three more guys lined up that would love to play this. <laughs> um, and we're going to see a rotation of some cast. You guys, are we are going to see some cameos. Um, some might even run like half the season. Some interesting new characters are going to you know, enter our lives as, and you know, put some of these guys down and pick them up again. But for right now, um, now this, this robot, this Cylon, this Zed, this... Uh, Yep. Yeah, you know, I already have a designation picked out for him too. Uh, okay. Um, I'm. You know what? I'm gonna write it in the chat. C four T. Nope. Cat. Nope. <laughs> um, now I'm spacing it out. The letters are together, but I'm spacing it out so that you, you know, you guys get the, the joke. And what was his designation? He's a five oh one. 501-Z security droid. Please security droid. Okay. So I place my order. The Acme box should be waiting on the resurgence basically by the time we get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's he's a 501-Z and then designation. Okay. So on your order... You know, like there's a serial number, you know, like they, they give you a red, you know, they, they, they find the stock number. He's the next one in line. Right now are you buying this like brand shiny new brand spanking new, my friend, they don't give a used 
cost, and I'm I, I think so for he's... something this important, I want no, to... no, you want stock because that's Off like that, that's like yeah. level one boring, you know, blah hit point thing. Because if if you take the stuff out of the book, some of these things are like geared at a certain cost, and they have a certain level of training. When you're getting like the stock model, you know, I was asleep yesterday, and now I'm shipped to you in a box. Yes, that's what I'm getting. But I mean, he still comes out of the box yep. as a beast. Yep. Part <laughs> seven of the, levels, part, seventh level soldier, two levels, yep. second second level scout. He's a ninth level equivalent character. But like I said, I'm not I'm not planning on being like walk in front of me while we just kill everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this is part of my empire. Okay, so there you go. Five O Z five O one Z dash P N T. PNT. Yeah. It's just a brand new mo- <laughs> Okay, guys, everybody, PNT sent in the robot. Hey, hey. <laughs> if we do want a break, be happy I didn't give him the designation TP <laughs> or TNP. It's the most valuable resource in the galaxy. That's right. <laughs> so. This is what your invoice says. Okay. Okay. Um, are you having him shipped to the resurgence? Well, it's kind of supposed to be hiding in space. You guys are in hyperspace, so where are you going to pick this thing well, up? Well, I'll I'll run through them to see if I can get they can get their hands on it for me first, obviously. And, and no, like, like I said, you, tied... you're in hyperspace. It's X amount of hours or days. You could probably but just no, make a detour. Um, I'm and... not I'm not having it sent to the resurgence. I'm having it sent to my strip mine in Bandamir. So you got to go all the way home. It's not home. How far is Benamir from where you guys are? Not that far. Okay. So a side trip. Side trip. Okay. So it's gonna but but it's all part and parcel with my nefarious plan to weasel my way into owning a fair share of the Bespin gas colony. Uh, okay. We'll so so are, you, are well right Wait, now you're what? In, right now you're in hyperspace coordinates heading right for the resurgence, so Right. Yep. What, 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 so what, I won't have it on the resurgence, but it'll be it'll be waiting for me, ready and raring well, to go. You're gonna pa- you're gonna pass it. So did you want to recalculate? Like you know, go up there, talk to Haas, and and pick him up. Um, hmm. pick him up now, and it'll delay you a couple days. But it's a good question. Full, well, you know what? Actually, party, you, know? you know what? Absolutely, that's what we are gonna do. I am going to actually go to the cockpit with a adjustment to the hyperspace coordinates and we are going to make a detour because i can take care of my other business there as prep work and also i'm gonna like i said i'm gonna on route get in touch with uh switch uh find out if i can dial in exactly where darga is but if not even a general idea sure And uh, Merrick will like this field trip anyways. It's a strip mine, so there's, like, explosions and stuff galore. What? Oh, yeah, dude. I own, I, I'm own. i half owner of a strip mine on Bandamere. You have had access to how much explosives this entire time, and you have never mentioned this to me. I don't know. I mine the stuff that, uh, that um, makes uh, turbo lifts, hyper lifts, whatever they're called. Makes Do things float. Propuls- yeah, propulsor lifts. That's it. So that's that's the uh, ore that is mined on Bandamere that my mind for like the housing like. or the fuel or the energy. The, the, it's the energy the source. Actu- yeah. So you burn this ore and you get it. The it stabilizer gives you, gives you okay. Gives you floaty uppy downsy. Not 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 to yeah. be confused with the Bespin Cloud City, which mines. Anyone? Anyone? Bespin gas? Nope. Galactic knowledge? Everyone? Anyone? Ooh. Nope. Can make an attempt, but I'm not going to say it's going to turn up something that's going to have a result. Yeah, this is untrained. 16 untrained? Left? 25. Okay. Anybody else? What are we looking for? Just uh, knowledge. Uh, a 21, apparently. Oh, you know. I know Merrick would know. I'd even give you a bonus. 
21 as well. Okay. Askeleth, Merrick, and Rahal. Tabana gas, which is oh, used, yes. which is used in the weaponry, as in like, you know, making the pew 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 come out of your gun. It's <laughs> yeah, it's the gas that is compressed and, and etc. and makes, you know, laser, you know, makes the blaster ammo, as it were. Hmm. Highly valuable resource. It's basically space gun powder. You know? Yeah. So Merrick knows exactly what they're trading at at this point is what you're trying to say. Yes. Well, I, I'm sure every <laughs> Star Wars fan, including myself, is just kind of like, you guys don't know that off the top of your head? Really? Really? You didn't know that? Shame. For <laughs> shame. For shame. Oh, sorry. My bad. It wasn't uh, propulsor lifts. It was deflector shields. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Oh, My bad. It's very different. Yes, it is. It's Ionite. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Duh. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> My bad. My bad. Well, b- before we prove how little, apparently, we all know about Star Wars, we're going to say goodnight, and we will see you next time on We to Ban It First. I mean, we TP'd first. I mean, we shot first here on the Rollmongers Podcasting Network. Say good night, Rahul. Good night, everybody. I am not a criminal.